a wonderful Wednesday as we get started for uh, lesson three in our math learn book. This is our fluency problem for the day. I want you to go ahead and uh, you know write it on a blank piece of paper, dry erase board, whatever you got there, and um, and uh, pause the video and come back and we'll solve. It. I'll solve it so you can check your work. Coach says, all right, all right, she's going to do it, so you got to do it too, okay? All right, we have two ones. Oh, sorry. We've got to uh, pay attention to our sign. Oh, okay. So we have two ones, and we need to take away or separate seven ones. Now, of course, we cannot do that if we only have two. So we have to come over here and get a 10. We have eight tens in this problem. So I'm going to take one of them, and that will leave me with seven tens. I can move that 10 over here to the ones place, plus the two ones. Now I have 12 ones. Take away 7. 12 minus 7 equals 5. I have now 7 tens because remember we had to move one over. That's one of the reasons that we don't try to solve these mentally. We use our um, the vertical map so that we can show that now we only have, or else you'll forget, and you'll be trying to do 8 minus 2, but it's 7 minus 2 takes a 7 minus 2 equals 5. 7 tens minus 2 tens is 5 tens, and then 6 hundreds minus 100 is 500. And look at that. The answer is 555. Okay? And, of course, you know how to check your math. I am not going to go into that at this point because I really feel like that these are things that you're getting very proficient at and you don't need me to do every single day. Okay? So we're going to go into our math application lesson. Now, in um, um, app and, and I forgot my announcements yesterday. I beg your pardon. Please forgive me. But in the announcements, I have told you that doing the problem sets on these are optional. And the reason for that is because a lot of them, um, you know, you, you, this is not something that you, when you're, you're making, uh, when you're solving problems like this, you don't have to make the chart. That's all I'm going to say about that. So, uh, we will just do the application problem, which is a, uh, uh, the, the process in a word problem. And uh, so, we're going to just do that together. See, on page 143a, it says, use the tally chart to fill in the picture graph. And then they, they actually show you a picture graph, right? Okay, I'm going to put that picture graph over here on the board so you can see it. You've got, uh, I'm just going to put a J for Jose. I might need to do that. An L for Laura. And mm, LA for Laura. And L-I for Linda. All right, so it looks like Jose has read eight books. Lynn, Laura has read five books. Now, we can see here that right now we don't know how many Linda um, has read. But that's what the problem is going to ask us to find out, right? We like to figure out. What's the problem going to ask us to figure out? In this case, I'm betting that we're going to have to figure out how many Linda has read. It says, draw a tape diagram to show how many books Jose read, how many more books Jose read than Laura. Hmm, okay. So draw a tape diagram to show how many more books Jose read than Laura. So here's Jose. 
Here's Laura. Now, Jose, he read more, right? So we're going to make his tape a little longer than Laura's. And here I'm going to show that Jose read eight. And here I'm going to show that Laura read five. Now, if we look at this and we want to find out how many more Jose read, well, this is the extra that he read, right? This is the extra that he read. So what number would have to go in there to make the same amount as Jose? So these Five, the missing number here would be three to make eight, and then they'd be uh, matched. So he read three more than she did. Yes, he read five, but he kept on reading. He read three more than she did. So a subtraction sentence would be eight, or take away five equals three. That would be the equation that would solve that problem because whenever we're comparing things, we're finding the difference between them, okay? Now, here is C. If Jose, Laura, and Linda read 21 books all together, how many books did Linda read? All right, so we did A together. And that's kind of a precursor to what we're getting ready to do. I'm going to show this with a tape diagram, okay? So we already said, here's our, here's our Jose tape, right? He's got eight. Here's our Laura tape. She's got five. And here's our Linda tape which has to stay empty, because we don't know. But we do know that all of this together is 21, because Laura, no, Jose and Laura, they, Jose read eight, Laura read five, then there were some more red, and then here was the ones that Linda read, which is a question mark for us right now. So what, what would we need to do in order to figure out how many that Linda read? Well, we see here that Jose read eight, and then there's the five that Laura read. So how many do we know were read by those two? How many were read by Laura and Jose? Are we going to combine those two numbers or are we separating them? We're combining them. I hope you said, I hope you said that because we want to find out how many Laura and Jose read. So we got to put those together. So that's an addition sentence, right? Eight plus five. And eight plus five, for those of you who have been doing your reflex math, you know, right there, eight plus five equals 13. So this part of our tape diagram up through here, this part of it is 13. So we've just got to figure out well, what, what would need to be over here to give us the 21. So this part is 13 and this part is 21. We need to compare those two numbers. We need to find out the difference between the 13 we know we have and the 21 that they told us everybody read together. And when we find that difference, we're going to find out the part that Linda read. So what would we need to do for finding the difference between, are we, are we combining those, the, all of these uh, numbers now? Are we going to combine the 21 with the eight, uh, that 21 they all read with the eight that Jose read with the five that Linda read, or yeah, Laura read? No, of course not. It makes sense, right? Be a very big number, and when we would put it right here, it wouldn't make that would make our tape diagram look silly, wouldn't it? A big number would look silly right here. So we had we need a subtraction sentence. Twenty one. Take away thirteen. Now, of course, when we're doing this, 
we're, we're getting, uh, we're being foolish if we don't go ahead and write it vertically because even your, your grown up moms and dads, they're going to stop and they're going to write that vertically because we're going to make mistakes if we try to start regrouping, looking at it like this. Okay. Now, now don't do that. All right. So I have one, one, and I need to take away three. Can't do that. Come over here. Take a 10. I've taken a 10 to put in the 10's place. So now I only have one 10 left. Put my 10 right here. 11 take away three. Oh, I hope you've been doing your uh, reflex math so that you know right away that that's nine. And then you've got your answer right here. Laura and Miss Snyder, or Linda, I keep getting those two girls mixed up. Linda, Miss Snyder did a bad. Michael would Michael would stop me right away. He'd say, Miss Snyder, you didn't write the sentence. Linda read blank books. I'm going to have to abbreviate that because I didn't leave enough room. I'll be writing on my kitchen bath, or dining room wall here in a minute. Linda read nine books. Now, let's put that into our tape diagram and see if that makes sense. Here's Jose's, here's Laura's, and here's Linda's. Would all of those together equal 21? Well, we can find out pretty easily, can't we? <laughs> coach just, coach just, oh, no. <laughs> yes. Sometimes when I ask questions, she says, well, we already figured out that 8 plus 5 is 13. So we know this part is 13 plus 9. 9 plus 3 is 12. Carry the 10. And we have 22. And Mrs. Snyder made a mistake. See, this is why using your math to check is a good thing. Because, see, I should have come back to 21. And I didn't. And I just realized here. That when I said 21 take away 13, I said 11 take away 3 was 9, and that was wrong. 12 take away 3 is 9. 11 take away 3, oops, sorry. 11 take away 3 is only 8. Then one minus one, of course, leaves it. So the answer is not that Laura read nine books, but that Laura read eight books. And by checking my work, I found my mistake. Now I do this, and this I did not do this on purpose. I, I honestly made that mistake of not of forgetting what um what was it? 11 take away three would be. But but I, I don't mind making these mistakes because I want students, I want you to know that we all make mistakes. It doesn't make us stupid. It makes us human. And it's reason why that we check our work. We look at things construct constructively and we check our work. Eight plus five is 13 plus eight now. I'm going to put that together. 8 plus 3 is 11, Miss Snyder. 21, carried that 10 over there. I've got 21 now. So now this makes sense. Our uh, um, tape diagram makes sense. Ooh, we could even do this. We could say, we could do this to check it. This is cool. We could say 8 and 8 are 16 plus 5. 6 plus 5 being 11. Here's our 10, and we still come back to 21 because, of course, it doesn't matter how we do it. We're going to come back to 21, aren't we, if we've done it right. Just like Ms. Snyder just found out, if you do it wrong, though, it's gonna, it's gonna, you're going to show it. Okay, so um, as I said, it's optional that you uh, work on these problem sets um, that can some children find it fun, some children find it confusing, and um, and I don't see any point in, in confusing you, okay? So we're just going to leave it at that. I will talk to you later in skills. Bye-bye.